Say what? Hello and welcome back. It's time for Say What, where we hear from those connected to the industry and about what's going on in our world of electrical apprenticeship. And that includes the topics that you're suggesting. So really, like, I'm going to beg, please, please keep those coming. I'm your host, Cindy Sandifer. So last year on the podcast, we chatted with Keith and Grace from the EWMC, the Electrical Workers Minority Caucus. And then we were fortunate enough to have Keith join us at NTI 2023 for a C group session. And he brought the EWMC National Secretary, Jamel Thrower, with him um, to that session. And you want to talk about a great person, great energy. Um, and you know me by now when I meet great, amazing, wonderful people. I want to get to know them and I want you to get to know them. I want to share their experiences with you. So today you get to meet Jamel. I want to kind of hear you know, a little bit about your story. So how did you even find out about the electrical construction like industry? Did you always know or did you, how did you get to well, this? I didn't. So um, it's, 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 it's actually rather comical. I actually started out non-union um, when, when I got home. Um, when I got back to the D.C. area, I was looking at what a policy I was going to do. I hadn't decided what I wanted to do yet. Um, so I was talking to my mother and some people, and they was like, and somebody said, well, I noticed that's a contractor hiring down in um, Virginia. So I called them that morning. I said, um, you looking for electricians? They said, well, yeah, if you can be down here by 10 o'clock, I'll give you an interview. Got in the car, went down there. It was When I talked to him, it was about 8.45. And I guess he didn't think I was going to make it down there by 10 o'clock because um, D.C. traffic is not easy, as I'm sure you have known because you've been here. Um, so I made it down there by 10 o'clock. He hired me. Um, he said, OK, we'll bring you on as an apprentice. Um, you're going to have to go to school. So I went to A.B. school. I started out in A.B.C. school. Um, I won a couple of awards for my apprentice for there. And then I started talking to some organizers um, at the time, Butch Ramos. Will come out and start talking to him on the job. It's like, hey, you know, you need to be a union electrician. And I was like, what's the difference? I ain't know nothing about union. I didn't understand what the conversation was. He said, well, you know, you got different benefits. You're not getting them now. I said, well, I guess I get some stuff. I get medical. And they was like, well, yeah, you get medical now, but that's coming out your check. That's coming out your money. How much you pay for that? Is it in addition to what you're getting? I was like, well, no, no. He said, how much you making out? I was like, uh, six twenty five. He's like, six twenty five. This is what our guys start at. He was like, yeah, I was like, well, I'm in school too. And you know, they took it out. They took the money out and I don't get it back till I finish school. I was like, and I want my money back. <laughs> right. So he was like, well, I was like, if I come, I can't come until I get my money back. So he kept coming out to talk to me. Then he brought another guy with him at the time, Chuck Graham. And Chuck was like, you know, you really need to come this opportunity. If you get an apprenticeship program. I said, well, they told me, and you know, I told them everything they was telling me about if I finished school, because my, my my average at the time was pretty high. I said, it was like, well, you know, if you come out of school and you finish top, you know, you get a savings bond, a TV. I said, really? I get a TV? <laughs> right? And so the TV kind of sold me, believe it or not. You ain't, It's kind of funny. The funny things that sell you at the time, right? I was like, I get a TV? He's like, yeah, if you make top apprentice, you'll get a TV. So um, they wound up bringing me in Kansas Avenue. I went to Kansas Avenue, took a test. We said, okay, yeah, we can bring you in. We can bring you in at the at the um at the second year i said okay so during the summer when i got my check back i got my check back for school that monday i started working with ibw um a company called regional electric uh, regional electric so i work with regional um it was a different per se because um that's when i really saw somewhat the difference being organized in um from from the inside um because they had a lot of our workers on the job I was coming in as an apprentice, organizing our workers, you know, and there was a lot of contention at the time because I was coming in as an apprentice and these our workers who wanted to get an apprenticeship couldn't get an apprenticeship. And I was coming in and I was already an apprentice. And so they were really, it was really upset. So I got to see, let's say some strife in the union perspective um, there. So at times it was not a happy period, but um, I've learned, you know, that, you know, I'm only there for so much, for so long and it's affect, you know, think about my money in the long term and think about the TV, you know, because I got to finish the program because I got to get this TV. <laughs> <laughs> I 
the important, you've got your priorities straight, right? Right, you got the priorities straight, right? So I go through the program. Luckily, I transferred out of regional. It got a lot better. I went to another contract. It got a lot better from there. Um, I started learning stuff. I started learning different things. They're coming into different personalities. Um, and honestly, these different personalities are somewhat what led me to EWMC. Um, so came into all these different personalities. And then finally came to graduation. I got my TV <laughs> and my savings bond. You got it. Okay. I was like waiting for that moment. Okay. <laughs> so, so I did I did graduate valedictorian. Um, so I did get my TV and savings bonds. And I was happy as a lot because I got my TV. <laughs> You're done. You're like, I, I'm, I'm done. I've accomplished. Hey, exactly. I was like, I was like, okay, I, I got, I got what I came here for. I got, I got my TV. And, um, at graduation, it was in a hotel out in, um, I believe it was McLean. The hotel was in McLean at the time where our graduations was held then. Um, of course they held differently than now. Um, uh, so when I was leaving out of graduation, of course, a lot of different guests come to the Wilson name. One of the person that came was, um, a guy that was um, the head of DC's, the regulatory agent for the District of Columbia. And at the time he asked me, he said, um, yeah, what, what, what are you doing? Did you ever, you know? I said, well, I'm gonna let you say, well, will you graduate by the tour and you ever think about sitting on one of the boards now that, what's the name? I said, what in the world is that? And I'm looking at him with a dumb look like a dick with the headlights. He said, well, we have an apprenticeship council, you know, and you can sit on that um, and you get to learn more about apprenticeship and to help out more. I said, well I, well, I do want to help because, you know, I had this opportunity because, and, you know, I was real thankful to Butcher Town because Butch came out, helped me, and now I'm making better money, you know. I'm able to support my family better. You know, at the time I had children, and a couple small children at the time. So I was like, sure, sure, no problem. Um, so then I got on the D.C. Apprenticeship Council. Um, from there, I, I started finding out other stuff I just needed to learn. I was like, where can I learn it? And so um, I wound up picking up the phone, and I, called um, our international office. And I got on the phone with a lady named Rietta Sanford. And I would never forget the conversation. Um, and she told me, well, if you wanna really understand the conversation, you know, I'm, I'm on this board, I'm sitting on here as a member of labor, but I don't understand what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, the guy asked me because he was at my graduation and I graduated via Dictorian. He was like, you, you know, you're the first person of color to graduate via Dictorian, not this program. I was like, okay. And so he wanted me on the board for that reason. I said, but now I'm sitting on this board and I have the slightest idea what's going on. And she said, well, let me tell you, this is what you need to do. And you need to start doing this. She said, you're, you're a child, you have a local EWMC chapter. And she put me in contact with some people. She said, you need to start, you need to start coming. You need to start getting involved and you need to start learning, going to the class and learning. And so I took notes for what she said. Um, and then I started getting involved. And, and that was my kickoff. That is basically my union start story and how I actually started at EWMC. That's, it's so, like, I love, like, so you had this connection to the electrical industry, right? You decided to go in, you go in through the non-union, right? Then you come over and had some contention. I, you know, I think it's important to talk about that. I, yes. I feel like we're getting better, you know, as yeah. far as accepting whether it's the organized worker or the person that's coming maybe as a CWCE or whatever different classification. But I do, I think there was this time where it's like, if you weren't the person who had some relative, right. That, that you were, you weren't a legacy electrician, you know, somehow you were less. And so I think that, you know, it's important for us to recognize, like, we don't want to make people feel like that. Like that's not something we should be proud of. We should be proud of bringing anybody and everybody in that's you know, correct. and that our doors are open. I think that's such an important part. I, and I you got a TV. A part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it, I mean, right. Like, who are we? If we're, we, you can't say brotherhood, sisterhood, siblinghood, and not allow people to be brought in. Right. That's correct. Wait, well, yeah. you can't say you can't keep into our, our, our own charter when it says organize all electricians. <laughs> you know, we want all electricians. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's an asterisk there that says, you know, except for, That's you know, correct. it has this list of people. And yeah, I'm still stuck on the TV too. I'm so glad you got it. Like, I would have been really disappointed in this story if you were like, but I didn't get the TV. Like, no, we're done. We're not talking about this anymore. No, 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 no. That's why I had to bring the TV up because it sold me and I got the TV. I did get the TV. And you got it. Like, and that's, and then you're not only to do that, right. To come in and say, I'm going to get this, 
Like that's how this thing's going to end. The apprenticeship's going to end for me. But to be the first person of color, I mean, how did that like, how did that make you feel? So, so <laughs> uh, mind you, I found out later. I did. I didn't understand the concept um, at the time. Um, and I was like, oh, 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 you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was different. You know, you're like, really? Yeah. No, because 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 you're looking at different people and, and you're looking at the surroundings. Um, mind you, w- when I first came in, um, Larry Greenhill Sr. was still and was transitioning over from being apprenticeship director, was leaving out apprenticeship director. And Dave McCord at the time was coming on. Those were our apprenticeship directors at the time. And Dave McCord was taking over the position. Um, so I saw Larry Greenhill in there for 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 a moment. So I was like, how could that be? Was he was apprenticeship director? I'm pretty sure I can't be the first, right? And and it's and it startled me to to, to understand that concept. Mm-hmm. Um, so I at the time I didn't understand the gravity of it at all. Mm-hmm. I really didn't. It, it was like over my head, you know how you how you miss some things. Yes. And I, I'm I'm somewhat hindsight glad I didn't. Mm. Because that way I just walked through it as if I was a regular electrician looking at something. It, it wasn't a goal or an achievement trying to reach. It was just, hey, you know, let's let's get this. I'm I'm here to try to be the best electrician I can be, you know. And right. that was my goal, honestly, to be the best electrician I can be and to get my TV. <laughs> uh, right. The TV was the goal, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. So <laughs> So that there put the, put put it in perspective to me. I was like, okay, good. Because had I known that, I don't know what the pressure would have done. Um, I assumed it would have been the same outcome. But you know, you know how assumptions are. And you never really know. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think it would have been the same outcome. But to not have that pressure on yourself is is important. But it's it's so you didn't go into it. You weren't trying to like break down doors. You know shatter glass ceilings like that, but you did, whether you meant to or not, that's what you did. And I, I look forward to the day that we're not still talking about firsts, be it women or people of color. Like I look forward to the day when it's typical to see, and then you name what it is, but I never want us to forget, you know, in, in your situation, right. I never want them to forget our first person of color. That was the valedictorian was like, there had to be that first. And then to say, wow, I'm so glad now we're not still talking about that, right? As far as first, like we we remember this moment and now we, this is just normal for our program. Like, that's what I can't wait for. Look, look, you and I both, and that, honestly, that that's why I'm such a big part of EWMC. Because um, mm. I, I want to be able to say when, when, I can, when we talk about IVPs, I don't want to say Jean is the only f- female IVP. You know what I mean? I don't want to say that. I want to be like, mm-hmm. yeah, so we got this one, you know, you know, this one's like this. We got this one here, this one here. That's what I want the conversation to be. Um, and we are progressing there, I believe, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and that's a big part of EDMC push to progress us there where it's not looked at. You know, you're not necessarily seeing Gina as the first woman. You're seeing Gina as a, as a competent IVP. So whether she was male or female, she deserved that job. And you can mm-hmm. see why she deserved that job looking at her. Look, looking at the work she does. Um, so I wanted to get that way where, where they're saying, you know, hey, you can't hold this person back, you know. So what, it ain't been there, but this this should be normal. Look at the work. The work they're doing, it, it demonstrates that position. And we're now at a, we get, and we can get to a point where we're saying, look at the, look at the work, not look at the person. Um, and it wasn't always that case. At times, you know, the work was fine, but the person was taken into consideration. Yeah. Yeah. And just people not being able to see, like, can't even imagine and fathom, you know, a woman, a person of color, whatever, you know, uh, someone from the LGBTQ plus community, like, you know, not being able to see it. And now I think that's the beauty of what's going on. And the EWMC being a huge part of that is where people can go in and say, oh, I see myself on a job site. I see myself in leadership. I know that this is possible. And, you know, then again, the gratefulness to Gina Cooper and people like that who have paved the way, right? My uh, father-in-law often says, you know, they dug the well that I now drink from, you know? And I think that's, that's what's happening. But to get to the point where it's just the way we are, I think that's, and and watching the EWMC in action, I had the privilege of attending my first in-person 
last year in 20, wait, in 2023. Um, and I'm telling you like, wow. And I know that was a really special year. I think we could probably talk for hours about that one, but man, there was so much healing, um, and just comfort. And then this connection, it, it was just, I mean, it's like, man, this is who we are and this is what we want to be. And, and that's true. And, um, that's why our theme was what it was. Um, because being in the pandemic, a lot of people were, were, and for the lack of a better term, I'm just going to say injured internally, mm -hmm. um, because we didn't have the everyday camaraderie. We didn't have the, the touches and the stuff you generally get. Um, and so it was different and we needed that healing. Um, I, I'm sure that you, you was really surprised by that surgery session <laughs> as it was going over, looking at your agenda and saying, hey, this is going to end soon. What's going to happen? And we kept it going because we knew that that was necessary. Um, mm -hmm. That's necessary to heal all IBW. Um, my only disappointment in that session is that unfortunately the IP left before that <laughs> happened. I wish he was in there to be part of that. Um, and we appreciate um, him being there, period, mm -hmm. though. Um, I would tell you, wait to Atlanta. If you think Denver was good, wait to Atlanta. Atlanta is going to be special. It's going to be, it's a 50th year anniversary, as you know. Um, so Atlanta is going to be special. And, 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 and you're going to say, I didn't believe you could top Denver. <laughs> and, the, and just for those listening, like, so by the time this episode airs, we do pre-record. So we will have already experienced it. But right. what Jamel's talking about is in Denver in January of 2023, there was this moment where we were talking about mental health. We were, you know, just talking about, like you said, our healing, the injuries we've encountered just in life. It doesn't have to be industry related. And there was just this total like breakthrough. I mean, people were sharing, people were crying. I mean, there was all this stuff. And so he's now telling me I need to bring boxes. It sounds like cartons of tissues with me to Atlanta. So, you know, we'll come back and talk about Atlanta because I can, oh my goodness, it was, it was beautiful. It was healing. It was, it was all those things. And, and you're in leadership. I mean, what, what is your position at the EWMC right now? So I'm the national secretary, which, which means all the correspondents go through me. Um, I send out all the correspondents. Um, I maintain the website. Um, most of the questions go through me. I maintain um, all the records and everything. Um, I'm also a part of the secretary's job is um, the parliamentarian. <laughs> um, for our meetings and different stuff. So I, I try to keep our president and everything on track as it does with rules and everything. Um, it's my job to make sure we, we we adhere to that and adhere to our bylaws, you know, and everything is up to date and as it should be. Send out any notices or anything that got to go to the different chapters. Um, and I answer questions from those chapters on them notices. Um, so I know I'm, I'm also basically a support to the board members who actually talk to the individual chapters. So as the secretary, I have no individual chapters under me as our board members do. Okay. So you're, yeah, you're helping all of the, and I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm going back to, you come back to DC, your family's like, Hey, have you thought about electrical work? And then from that moment to getting your TV, cause that, that still registers in there as a high point, but like to now you are doing this work to take what you've had and to make it available for all people, you know, and, and to give back. It's like, Oh my gosh, that, that timeline, you know, that, that history that you have and then what you're willing to do to serve and give back to others and support, you know, the president, you guys were at, at NTI, you and Keith. And that was just, that was fantastic to have you all there. Um, we appreciate it's, it's, being wow. there. Oh, you're coming back by the way, that's happening. So what are you most excited about in, as far as our industry goes and the changes that you see coming? Like what, what gets you excited? So, so what gets me excited is the changes we're having and the ability to learn and ability to shape our industry. Um, I remember in, in D.C. when I was growing up, I remember the steam. All the steam always came out around all the government buildings and different stuff. And mind you, that was the heating conditions. Solid state changed that. You don't see steam when you walk around the downtown D.C. anymore because solid state changed the way we heat our buildings. So that industry took a major shift in the 80s, if you remember. I see that shift coming to our industry now. As lighting controls change, the lighting controls are coming a whole lot more intense. Um, the different power sections is coming a whole lot more intense. I see us now having to take learning to a whole new level of what we're required to learn and what um, electricians are required to know on the job site to get the job done. And I'm excited about that. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm excited about watching that growth spurt because I think I think IBW can be the lead in that growth spurt. Mm -hmm. And I really think... Um, 
then we can lead that path to really take over market share to benefit this country a lot and build our country out. So true. And I, I didn't come from the field. I've been a part of the industry just because of my father and uncle and, you know, cousins and stuff like that. But I didn't go through the training, but I'm still kind of as a outsider looking in and watching, you know, seeing the the changes that the ETA is making, you know, in curriculum and how we train and how we get those hands on moments, you know, for for the learners. And so it's been that part's been incredible. And what do you do at the the JTC? We've talked about the EWMC, but I wanted to talk about your role at at the JTC and what you're doing. So that's new for me. So I'm, I'm a full time instructor now. Um, so so it's new. So so I'm actually in the classroom with the apprentices um, providing instruction. Um, helping them, you know, trying to guide them on as as they go through their path. <laughs> like, okay, so ne- and now I'm adding more to this timeline. You know, it's like now you're the one inspiring, teaching, encouraging, you know, motivating all that stuff. Like, it's just such you have such a wonderful. I feel like this this story. It's inspiring. You know, it's encouraging um, for anybody that's like, even if this isn't their field. You know, to hear and to see what's these endless possibilities, you know, that are, that are before you and making your own, right? Like saying, I'm going to get to know these people. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to find out what I can do and then do it. You know, and that's just, it, it's huge to me. Um, so, okay. So we'll wrap up with, I want to know if you, if you're talking to, let's say, you know, JTCs, AJTCs, but really our industry in general, like how do we support the EWMC and, and the effort? So- Mind you, and that's that's a wonderful question. I thought about that it's question. It's a hard one. I want you to know, ever since I read that question, my my, <laughs> my thought process has been on that question because it, it's it's a this is a, and the best way I can say it, it's a two way part because it's us supporting you as well as you're doing often the support. And I want to say that the support you can offer is have the doors and the avenues open so we can have open lines of communication, mm-hmm. and it's us supporting you and getting the necessary qualified people because. What we're looking for is is a is a industry that look like us, right? Mm-hmm. All of us, an industry that look like America, industry that works for all of us, and that includes everyone, um, all our underrepresented populations, and an ability to have our underrepresented populations come in and feel welcome, because sometimes that that's the biggest thing, not feeling welcome. Um, mm-hmm. I know I hear now a good amount from our LGBT community and them not feeling welcome on the job site, especially those of the trans. Um, they generally yes. have a, a a huge fight in that process. Um, so we're doing stuff and offering classes and trying to find avenues to make them feel welcome. So as long as, f- from y'all's standpoint, there's a, there's a open line of communication, there's an avenue open to us where we can have them conversation with you say, hey, look, th- this is, because because this section is talking about apprentices that's having that problem. And mm-hmm. let's understand we have a good amount of trans apprentices, you know, right. they get into the program and then decide to make that transition after they've gotten into the program. Um, and that that's a challenge um, because that that's a, that's a different process for instructors. That's a different process as it relates to documentation, because let's understand apprenticeship work on documentation um, mm-hmm. and it works on government documentation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so for someone transitioning, it's it's a different world. Um, mm-hmm. and there's certain pieces that they gotta understand. They want certain stuff done, but they can't get it done because there's also guidelines that being run by apprenticeship. So mm-hmm. we like to talk to you about those. Um, some of the birds, I want to say we've had conversations before. Um, our president had conversations with Todd and everything, um, Mr. Stafford, excuse me, about the interview process and how we feel yeah. about the interview process, how we feel sometimes that is a barrier. A unnecessary mm-hmm. barrier and avenues to, although we're saying it's a barrier, we got to offer you an avenue to fix that barrier that will work just as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and having an open conversation about, hey, these are replacement possibilities for that barrier. Mm-hmm. And as long as that avenue is open, I believe we can work together hand in hand and in, in, in making a greater um, whole industry, you know, ETA, um, IBW, and, and that's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, it's, we just had, well, at the time of this recording, we had our fall regional in Vegas and we, and we talked about that. And, you know, this, uh, one of the attorneys was speaking to the idea of, like you're pointing out, you know, the aptitude test, the interview, and this validated process that really backs up the JTC as far as, okay, if someone were to, you know, come, come at you legally, if you will, right, that 
we've got this backing through air, you know, this, this Institute research that can, and so they're looking into things like, I know GAN has been brought up. And so what we're trying to do is collect data so that we can validate other processes so that basically when a JTC decides this is the way we're going to go, it can be like, okay, you've got full backing here that if anything came up with someone saying they weren't treated fairly or they try to come legally, you've got a validation behind it. And so I'm, I'm with you. Like, I think all these discussions, the recognition, and, and you and Keith talked about at NTI and, and he said it, he was up kind of on a panel at, at a general session. And he said, you know, people used to call it the black caucus right. instead of the electrical workers minority caucus. And he was really adamant in saying, we don't have a problem with white men. Like there's no problem there. We need you. We want you. We want right. to have this conversation. We, we want to support you and we want you to support us and, and like come to the conference. And I can say, having been there, it's for everybody. Like it is for everyone. And so I think that it's such a great message that like, this isn't excluding, this is about including and bringing us all together. Yes, ma'am. And I love that. Um, so where's the TV now? I got to ask that before we leave. Like, where's the TV at now? So believe it or not, the TV is now in the basement. Um, I was forced by my children to stop having it because it's set in the room and I watched it all the way up to about two years ago. And <laughs> my, my children told me that, no, I cannot watch an inner tube TV. Because of course, back then, it was the year 2000. It was not a flat screen TV. And... Um, <laughs> It's not a smart TV. You're not getting Netflix on it. Like, you know, and it was a TV VCR combo. So I understand. I was, I was like, oh, you know. So it was in 2000. It was fantastic. Yeah, that, it was the thing in 2000. Yes, that's state of the art, right? Like, yeah. And so I, I hear it's you. sitting in the basement in a box marked "Do Not Get Rid Of." Cause that's still my memento that, that, that is still a, a mark to me that, that TV has a meaning to me. <laughs> yes. Hey, one day, you never know how things go one day that, that might, you might be willing to part with it for the right amount if it goes exactly. you know, <laughs> vintage TV for sale kind of thing. Yeah. Oh man. Well, thank you. I know you've got lots to do, um, but we really appreciate you, Jamel, taking time to be here and chat with us, share yourself and, and ways to encourage us and, and keep us all moving forward. So thank you again so much. No problem. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the time. I appreciate the questions. Look, and you have a, a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your show. All right. You too. All right. Okay. I hope that you all, and I love doing these. I always say like how much I enjoyed it and the guest and the story. And this one is no exception. Um, I met Jamel, his energy. I met him walking through uh, the NTI trade show and he had the EWMC had a booth and he was at the booth and I swear we chatted for like 30 minutes and I came back by and we chatted again and then um, he and Keith the president uh, presented so anyway um, I, I thought you all would enjoy a conversation with him as much as I have so Jamel thank you big huge thanks for taking time out of your day um, in fact your lunch break uh, to share your story with us and always thankful for you, for the listeners, um, for being a part of our podcast and joining me here. Um, and we want to hear from you. Send those topics over. Let us know if you want to join and be a guest and talk about some things that are relevant to us. Just send an email, say what, S-A-Y-W-A-T-T at electricaltrainingalliance.org. Our next episode will drop in March and you just stay connected with us through newsletter, blog posts, social media, subscribing to our podcast. Stay powered up and we will see you next time. Say what?